Today, we're gonna take a look at beveling 101. This is something we haven't done before. We're gonna take a look at everything from how to hold the bevel all the way through how to make it work. That's coming up. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Reese. This is Weaver Leather Supply. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at beveling, beveling 101. In fact, how to make a bevel work, how to hold it, and what makes it not work? What makes it do things you don't want it to do? I know a lot of you out there are new, and learning how to use a bevel can be one of the more frustrating techniques when you're new. So that's why we're gonna cover it at an absolute basic level today. So the very first thing that we need to take a look at is what kind of leather can you bevel? What kind of leather can you tool? And the only answer to this is veg tan. Chrome tan, oil tan, those kinds of leathers, while they will take an impression for a very short amount of time, because of how soft they are, they tend to relax, and that, that detail that you put into it's gonna, it's gonna essentially melt away over time. So the only kind of leather that we're gonna be beveling or tooling is gonna be veg tan. Now, what thickness of leather can you bevel? Well, you can bevel anything from one ounce all the way up. The most common is going to be that four up to about a 10 ounce. The sweet spot for me personally is kind of in that six to eight ounce range. Like I said, you can tool a one ounce, two ounce, but that takes an extra set of skills that, you know, it's that we're not going to be covering that today. So that six to eight ounce range tends to be the sweet spot depending on what project you're working on. Now that we know what kind of leather we can bevel, what about how to prep that leather? Now we did an entire video on this maybe a month or so ago, something like that, and we go through the entire process. So if you need more information on how to case leather, which is what it's called when you add moisture to veg tan leather so that you can tool it, we did an entire video on that about a month, month and a half ago, something like that. I'm gonna put the name of it right here and we're gonna put a link in the description so that you can go through that in detail. And we're not gonna cover that today, but just know that to bevel correctly, we need to add moisture to our veg tan leather so that it will move so that we can manipulate it the way we want to. So with that out of the way, we can actually get to the point of the video and that is how to use a bevel. So the first thing that we need to know is how to grip the bevel. And the way that I found the best um, the, the most effective way to do it is to get a really stable platform to work from. And by that, I mean I want my thumb and my forefinger to be at the top. My middle finger is going to brace it. So we've kind of got that uh, three points of contact right there between my index, my thumb, and my middle finger. And then my other two fingers are going to act as a base to stabilize my hand and the bevel. The base fingers are the area where I see more people making mistakes than any other. They, for some reason, they want to float their hand over the leather or barely touch it, and really that's going to create an unstable platform. We want good contact with the leather and a good stable grip on the bevel. Now, you don't have to have a death grip on the bevel. You just need a good stable platform, and part of that means that you have to have a good grip on it so that it's not going to wobble and bounce around on you. You need to have a good stable platform to work from. Now, one of the other really important things that we need to talk about is what orientation should the bevel be in in relation to your vision? Well, you always want to be able to see the face of the bevel. The bottom line is it's very difficult to follow a line that you can't see. So whether you're running it, you know, in would that be parallel with you or perpendicular to you, either way is fine provided that you can see the face of the bevel. My technique for walking it is to allow those base fingers to stay in place as I move the bevel across the leather. I find that this gives me a much more consistent result than trying to move my whole hand. As we move it, we either want the bevel to barely float above the leather or lightly touch it. A lot of the guys who've been doing this longer than I've been alive will tell you to float it above the leather. And this is without a doubt the traditional way to do it. It's a time-tested technique that absolutely works. Personally, I like to have my, my bevel barely touching the leather. I like that tactile feedback from being able to feel what the bevel is doing. What I'm not doing is using it like a shovel. I don't want the toe of my bevel down in that trough that I'm creating. I want it just barely touching the leather so that I can feel that line, but really it's just floating there. It's not down deep in that bevel that I'm creating. Test those two techniques, see which one works best for you. But either way, the bevel either needs to float or glide right above the leather. 
The next thing that we need to talk about is how far should you be moving the bevel? And the, the, the real answer here is as little as possible. You want as much overlap between that last strike and the next strike as you can get. A lot of times you're going to hear me say 50% overlap and the truth is that's the bare minimum. If we can get to like 75 or 80% overlap, that's even better. But the reality is it's kind of hard to tell how much of an overlap you have other than just doing your best to make sure it's overlapping. Because it can be really difficult to tell, am I at 50% overlap or 65% overlap or 80% overlap? Really, what I would suggest to you is to simply go as slow as you can with the bevel. That's gonna give you the most overlap and it's also gonna give you the smoothest, most consistent result with your beveling. And the last thing that we need to talk about is how deep should you bevel? We want to bevel as deep as our cut. And what that means is if our, if our cut starts out at one third the thickness of the leather and it fades out into nothing, our beveling should do the exact same thing. So essentially, you want to match your swivel cut. One last bonus tip for you, wide bevels and checkered bevels tend to be much easier to work with than a narrow and a smooth bevel. The reason for this is the wider the bevel, the easier it is to make sure that we've got nice, consistent, overlapping strikes. The other thing is with checkered, it tends to hide a little bit of the inconsistencies in your beveling. Now, it's not a miracle worker, but it will help. That'll do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, go make something amazing.